It occurred to me that bobby pins might be effective and easy to use fasteners for building with corrugated plastic. As a proof of concept, I made a couple of desk organizers. This is the kind of solution I'm always looking for. I know they're out there, and I'm excited to find them. But how well will bobby pins actually work? Let's find out. My desk is an old and cheap one, but it has a sliding keyboard platform of sorts, and it has a shelf that allows me to place my screen at eye level, so it works well for me. The space below the shelf, however, is awkward to make good use of, and the vertical space to the side even more so. Corrugated plastic offers a solution to these problems. I measured the space below the shelf and the things I wanted to put there, and did a very crude drawing to use as reference. Bobby pins are easy to remove, so I can make parts of the right size and then assemble them like building blocks as needed. This gives me a lot of flexibility, so I didn't include any more detail in my plan than was absolutely necessary, choosing instead to make decisions with the parts in front of me. For bobby pins to be effective, the flutes play a large role. I noted the orientation of the flutes in my drawing. The corrugated plastic needs to be cut right up to the interior walls. I did this with the phone stands just to make them look better. Here's a closer look. The plastic needs to be cut like this rather than like this. The outer walls like this will need to be cut away. This has an effect on measuring and drawing lines for reference. Each measurement has to be rounded to the nearest whole flute, so to speak. This took some getting used to. One way of dealing with this was to measure and cut one piece at a time, cleaning up the ends as I went. I'm still trying to figure out the best way to trim away the excess outer walls. I'll try it again with a straight edge, but that didn't work so well for me on this first project. I've had some luck in the past using the inner wall as my guide while cutting, but it hasn't worked consistently. My best solution so far has been to cut right down the middle of a flute not worrying about getting a straight cut, and then trim away the extra outer walls by cutting away from my torso with the blade flat to the inner wall. I got better at this with practice, but I still can't do it consistently. A lot of mistakes were made, and a lot of cleanup was necessary. The connection of two pieces with a bobby pin is a bit springy. This makes assembly a little tricky, but not too bad. It will probably limit what we can do with this building method. There's a limit to the amount of weight a bobby pin can take, of course. I counted the flutes to make sure things came together properly. Mostly as an experiment, I made a back panel for the taller set of shelves. The flutes of the panel aren't oriented the same as the other parts, so they can't be used in the same way to attach it. I made pairs of small holes to put the bobby pins through. I made each pair of holes on either side of an interior wall so that that inner wall would offer extra strength and the bobby pin wouldn't pull through. The tolerances were quite tight, but I made measurements and drew guidelines and it came together on the first try. I built drawers for some of the shelves. These are boxes, and I've built many boxes. But boxes for different purposes need to be built differently. I went with probably the simplest approach for these drawers. I used the easiest fold, which involves cutting through one outer wall of the plastic. I set the knife blade short and ran the blade holder 
along the straight edge to keep it cutting a consistent depth into the plastic. After that, folding the plastic was easy, although I did proceed slowly and carefully. I'd like to try thin screws as a fastener. I've seen this done, and it seems to work well. Unfortunately, I had no suitable screws, and acquiring them seems problematic at this time. Tape has served me well in the past, so I used a transparent tape to hold the drawers together. I made a template to create notches for opening the drawers. The larger drawers were deep enough to use bobby pins to secure a divider. The bobby pins do hold the shelves together well enough, and my first project was very successful. More important than the desk organizer is the bobby pins themselves. They are a great tool for attaching pieces of corrugated plastic, and a great addition to my corrugated plastic toolkit. Flutes vary in size due to being compressed from use and maybe some inconsistencies in manufacturing. Resulting variations in the width of the shelves makes the vertical supports kind of wavy. My vertical supports vary noticeably in height. Some combination of the quality of my template and my cutting of the notches created noticeable inconsistencies and asymmetry. Beyond these issues, my desk organizer looks pretty good. It functions exactly as I hoped. The desk itself provides the structure that keeps everything in place. The bobby pins do a good job of keeping the shelves in place. Of course, there's a limit to the weight they will support. Bobby pins aren't the only fastener we'll need to make things using corrugated plastic, but they are a great addition to the arsenal. Pieces like the back panel of the tall shelves provide a lot of additional structural support. How much weight will bobby pins hold? The best indication I can give is that I trust a shelf with two portable hard drives. The shelf is slightly bowed, but I see no sign that the bobby pins are in danger of giving out. I put loose change in the bottom drawer because that could get quite heavy, and that's more weight than I want to put on these shelves. I'd like to have used something better than tape on the drawers. At some point, I'll try screws, possibly on new drawers, if these don't last as they are now. Thanks for watching. I hope it's been a good trip. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and click the bell to be sure that you're notified of my next video.